so I would firstly like to thank all of you again to uh, invite me to address the students. And I remember that last year, it was uh, last time it was such a great experience. Always it's uh, a learning experience for all of us. We have crossed a th certain threshold of age to interact with the young crowd. And uh, it's not only we are here to give lectures or to part, uh, you know, wisdom, which has somewhat come, you know, a very minuscule of it, perhaps through the experience. And definitely we are very happy to share it with you. But let me tell the young people today that we are also learning a lot from you. You know, every time I interact with the young students, every time I visit uh, universities, of course, in the last few months, it's not being possible due to the pandemic. But you know, interacting even through a through technology, uh, it has always been a learning experience uh, for me, and I'm so happy to hear that uh, Deepak, the student, I remember his uh, beautiful voice and his very passionate singing. And again, it's uh, I said you know before I say anything, I think that itself exemplifies that when you follow your heart, and your heart is in the right place, you know, uh, you do. Uh, achieve your goals. One of the first things, you know, I don't know if you have uh, uh, nowadays, of course, you know, because of this whole lockdown and social distancing, the whole life has changed, uh, turned for most, most of us and especially for the young people. Uh, it's an experience which we could not even think in our time that I could not even think one year back that we have to go through this. This is a very, very trying period. But it has also led to you know, new innovative ways of interaction as we are doing it today through Zoom. And it has also, at least for me, you know, led to many uh, exploring many avenues, <clears throat> which I never due to lack of time or due to lack of uh, both professional and social pressures could not pursue. But uh, then, you know, somewhere you have an interest and then suddenly, you know, when you have so much of time in hand and you can't go out and you can't meet friends. So I always wanted to learn piano. And uh, during this time, you know, I borrowed a keyboard from a friend of mine and I started, obviously I could not get a piano teacher. You know, I never learned piano ever in my life, but being a dancer, of course, I had a very good sense of music. So just through the net, I started learning piano, started, you know, practicing it. And I suddenly discovered a new passion in my life. Now, whether this passion is going to lead anywhere in terms of professionally, I don't think so. I mean, I'm 55 years old. Uh, I mean, if I start learning piano at this stage, there is no way that I'm ever being able to, uh, you know, forget about being a professional, but even I can, can't even perform in public, perhaps I will be so bad. But still, you know, the kind of happiness and pleasure it is giving me and the kind of sense of, you know, fulfillment it is giving me, you know, that itself, I think, is also a parameter of success. So when we talk about passion and when we do talk about success, you know, I think these are two very key words. Firstly, what is your passion? Many of us, you know, are born with you know lucky enough to be born with they know that what they want to do they have you know inner talent what we call god gifted talent i don't know if you people are seeing this uh, uh, series on netflix called the queen's gambit it's uh, about a young orphan girl and uh, she suddenly realized she saw somebody playing chess and uh, she got attracted towards that without knowing anything about chess, without even knowing the name of the game. But just by watching for a few times, you know, she started realizing the pattern, the movement of all the pieces. And then she went on to this is this series follows her journey that how she you know becomes a world class uh, chess player. So this girl was lucky enough you know, to be born with an inborn talent and which she was lucky enough to be provided with an opportunity where she could identify her talent and her passion and she really succeeded in every terms, uh, whether in terms of her own satisfaction or whether in terms of her 
own uh, you know achievement in terms of career goal but many of us we do not even know what is our true passion i think this is something you know we might like doing something and then after a few years say no this is not it you know we want to do something else so i think one of the most important thing you know to identify your own true passion how it happens when it happens you know this is something we learn all through our lives journey and many of us as i say that we are not lucky enough to be born with that absolute you know inner talent which we could identify i personally believe that every individual every individual has got some inner talent or something or the other but sometimes we are not being able to identify that so i think you know this is something it's a life process that you know we need to identify that what is that inner talent you know what we have and you know your passion your talent everything when it comes together then let me tell you nothing can stop you and your parents your teachers your friends and you yourself you know are the most capable person of identifying that so when we talk about passion you know it's not about it could be anything it could be anything and what is passion to you you know other people might find it you know how stupid how silly uh, i remember you know one of my very close friends in uh, college and uh, he was a couple of years uh, senior to us um, he was in mathematics and one day i asked him and he was passionately involved in that passionately involved in that and i was from the art background i was uh, in history and sometimes let me tell you that you know i still have nightmares that tomorrow morning i have to go for a math exam and i get up in the middle of the night <laughs> so that is a kind of uh, fear i had towards mathematics and this fellow was very passionately involved with maths and you know i asked him once that you know how do you uh, what do you find in such a subject you know which is so dry which is so boring you know which is uh... so then he said that you know these numbers whenever i look at numbers you know i mean something happens in my mind something happens in my brain and i start you know it's like a play it's like you know i said he said whenever you listen to music you know whenever you listen to music you know something happens to your brain and you know i have seen that you know there is whole exchange in your expression so what is this i mean you know what is what triggers what impulse you know it creates what triggers uh, a person's imagination that i still don't know but yes it is something which could vary from individual to individual so anyway so this person you know went on uh, to become a very very successful ca which is again everything to do with numbers and of course he is minting a lot of money which again he is <laughs> something to do with numbers and the best part of it you know he is enjoying whatever he is doing you know he has achieved whatever he is uh, through his passion so you know we there are thousands of example thousands of example in life that you know you have to uh do if you really want to be successful in your life you know you have to follow your passion and you have to be good at what you are doing you know to achieve success you have to be good at what you are doing and to be good at what you are doing you have to enjoy it you know nobody can force you if you are forced into being doing something which you really don't like from your heart no matter what you know you will do it half heartedly and that doesn't produce good result so but when you are enjoying it you know it does the work becomes a pleasure the work itself becomes a play you know so you are enjoying you know you are so you will do it with your full mind with your full heart with your full attention so that produces a far more effective result so this is very simple very simple to say but very difficult also to achieve because especially in cases you know where we see that in a society your parents your friends your teachers your communities you know they have lot of expectations and those expectations may vary from what you want for example in our days you know you guys are lucky i must say that in today's generation you know you have a vast opportunity vast avenue people's mindset also change the parents mindset have, have changed so much but in our generation there were very few things you know either you have to become a doctor or an engineer some professional 
or you have to go get into civil services or you get into academics and uh, the kind of background i come from you know there of course in any bengali household art is part of your everyday life you know you have to learn music or dance or painting or recitation so that's part of our growing up but that's just as a hobby so that hobby rarely becomes translated into uh, a profession primarily you know something it is it was at least in my my time it was still for most of the middle class families you know to become a professional dancer or a professional musician or a professional singer and especially classical you know where uh, the audience is very limited uh, the scope of earning money is very very limited you know there is no an artist doesn't have a, a secure job it is very very unpredictable depending on how many programs are you getting and uh, there is there was hardly any kind of private sponsorship in those days now nowadays still for classical art classical music and dance there's lot of sponsors but during our time there was hardly any uh, uh, other than the government uh, uh, patronage there was hardly any sponsorship from the private sector so it is due, primarily due to lot of uncertainties uh, you know parents did not really encourage uh, their children to uh, get into a profession which is so uncertain so for me also it was uh, till i did my post graduation i did my post graduation in sociology from uh, jnu and uh, till then i was also like not very sure that you know whether for me the options were i either to get into academics because i was also a reasonably decent student and i also loved reading i loved uh, my subject i loved my uh, my sociology so that was something or you know i was wanting to also exploring the idea of getting uh totally you know as a professional dancer during my school and college and uh, university days i used to do small programs little programs but that's more for you know uh experience and exposure and also earning little bit of pocket money programs also very you know rarely came um so but then i thought that you know what is it you know i really want to do what is it you know it makes me really happy and then i felt that when i'm performing on stage you know when i'm facing the audience and when i am you know whatever my years of training you know whatever my whole thought process which has gone behind the composition behind the choreography when i am you know presenting it to people that applause you know that appreciation which might be very very you know for a short duration the performance last maybe maximum for um, an hour an hour, hour, hour and a half half at the maximum uh, classical dance performance but that time you know that connect with the audience and it produces such a ecstatic feeling and you know on one hand you are dancing for the people for the audience on the one ha- other hand you are totally in your own world it's a very different experience altogether uh you are totally in your own world i mean sometimes you even forget that there is an audience in front you know so i don't know that feeling which i felt despite you know uh there is no security in that profession there is no guarantee there is no guarantee that after after you know at the beginning of the month there would be a paycheck but it respective of everything i chose that because i felt that this is what i loved doing the most this is what i loved doing the most and uh, and yes i think uh, because i loved doing it and i just love not you know dancing is or any art is not just you know performing on stage that whole process of you know years of practicing grueling practice what we call riyaz when you are doing a composition that it's not just you know it's a dance is not just a physical exercise or creating something it's a very creative process where you are you know um, employing all your faculties you know your uh, uh, whatever you have learned whatever you have studied you know whatever theme you are developing upon so you know it, it you are engaging your every 
system, you know, every part of your body and mind. So I really felt that, you know, it gave me so much of satisfaction, so much of joy that, you know, I am willing to face all the insecurities, you know, which is, which is going to, you know, face me uh, if I decide to take it up as a profession. And I was lucky enough that my parents, they fully supported me. You know, they told me that, you know, you have chosen a very hard line. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a very hard profession. It's a very, uh, I mean, you know, there is no financial security. Uh, there is, uh, you know, dancers have very short shelf life, uh, especially a classical dancer or any dancer, you know, have a very short shelf life because, you know, our bodies are instrument. And no matter what, no matter how fit you are, no matter what, uh, you know, exercises, how much of riyas you do, uh, you cannot dance in your 40s as you dance in your 20s. That's a, that's a unfortunate biological fact. So dancers also have a very short shelf life, you know, as a performing artist. Of course, then you can graduate to a choreographer or you can become a teacher, but that's a different thing. So is it whatever you decision you take, you know, think it over. So again, I thought it over and this is, I felt that this is something I want to do. And uh, I went ahead and I did it. And to be very honest, I did not earn a lot of money. And, uh, but I earned a lot of recognition. And as a people's applause, that's such a high that I don't think anything else can replace it. And what it also, I mean, when I now look back at my dancing career, what it gave me is a tremendous exposure around the world, around the world. You know, I have traveled uh, for my performances to more than, uh, uh, you know, 40, 45 countries. And uh, so on one hand, there is this tremendous pride that, you know, you are uh, a cultural representative, a cultural ambassador of your country, that where you are, you know, taking this thousands of years old, very rich, cultural heritage and presenting it to a world audience and simultaneously you are also learning from them you are also learning from them and this has created for me such a golden opportunity such a golden opportunity to travel the world I'm also extremely fond of traveling so to travel the world to meet with different kind of people from different sections of people from different countries of the world uh, so it has been a very, very enriching experience. And though my bank balance is still very low, but I would say the balance sheet of my life experiences, I have got far, 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 you know, more from it rather than perhaps I have given. So when I look back at my life and then somebody asks that, would you like to relive again in a different way or choose another profession or something? I would say no. I mean, I am very happy with what, with what I did. And uh, I, of course, you know, I have stopped dancing since many years now uh, because my body can't take it anymore. And uh, after joining politics, again, that has taken a back a seat uh, because as I always say that, you know, you can't be a half, a part-time artist and a part-time politician. Both are very full-time jobs. And even in politics also, you know, politics is something which is, you have to be passionately involved. You have to believe in the cause, you know, the cause, what your party stands for, the cause, what you're fighting for. Right and wrong, you know, that's a different issue. There is nothing right, there is nothing wrong. There is always, you know, both sides of, uh, different sides of the argument, but you have to be very involved. So one thing I also realized that um, both politics and art, you know, there are, though these are like apparently some very, very, uh, you know, different end, uh, two different ends of the spectrum. But there are similarities because both are people oriented. You know, you are addressing, it's communication. Both are communication. Both, for both you have to be, both are very trying. Both are being an artist and being a politician. Both are very difficult jobs. And you have to be, you know, 24 seven engaged at least in your mind, you know, with that, uh, <clears throat> with that thing. And for that, somewhere, you know, you have to be, you know, passionately involved in it. So I don't know, my, my journey as a politician is uh, very uh, comparatively, I just joined politics about six years back. So I don't know whether, whether it's 
going to lead me somewhere or not i i don't know but yes as a learning process i think it has been a tremendous learning process again and uh, again it has uh, given me the opportunity to travel to even the remotest corners of india to meet different kind of people whom normally i wouldn't even think you know to go to visit those small villages to see how they are living which in a normal uh, life people don't do you know those are not touristy places so in terms of as i say if nothing else just the learning experience has been so great so i think you know all the uh, all, all, all the heat and dust of politics has been worth so far so this is you know very uh, briefly i have told you about my passions in my life and uh, but i would like to also say that you know when we talk about passion when we talk about following your heart you also have to somewhere balance things which is extremely important because i don't know i mean if you say that firstly you know there are uh, i mean if your heart says that you know i want to explore with different kind of drugs i want to do, explore with you know have those kind of experiences so which are i think utterly stupid utterly criminal <laughs> so you have to also see that you know your passion does not in any way harm yourself hurt yourself and hurt others so while following your passion following your following your heart is of course extremely important you know for the success for your success it should not in any way be any cause of hurt and harm to others so you can't say you know there is say that i can there is some people say i can kill for my passion no you cannot you cannot kill for your passion you know your passion is your own and you have to follow it you know not to such a degree that it can hurt others this is something you know i think what you always have to remember secondly when we talk about success you know what is success i really don't know what is you know it definition if you say you know a common parlance common everyday language of course you know you think that you know you have to earn lot of money you have to become very you have to become rich and famous you know you have to uh, be uh, you know somebody in the society of course those things are very important very very important but the, at the end of it you know as i say that when you do everything you know firstly you have to have a long term goal long term vision so for example you know when i was learning dance my guruji used to tell that you know you have to do uh, two hours riyaz two and a half hours three hours riyaz every day practice riyaz is practice and when you practice after half an hour you know your body starts paining you know you are sweating you are tired you just want to go and play but then you have the goal i mean i had that goal that okay you know after one year i am going to perform i am going to do this so that would invigorate me that would make me happy so for me that was also a success you know when i completed my two hours of practice you know it did not give me any money it did not give me any fame it did not give me any uh, you know instant coffee results but i had that long term goal that long term vision and when i completed my two hours of practice you know i felt i had been successful in my mission so that itself is a success so at the end of it i think somewhere you know you have to uh, definition of success varies from person to person so you have to see what is your definition of success is your definition of success is making lot of money is that going to give you happiness if that gives you true happiness definitely follow it if your idea of success that i have to become very famous that when i walk out of the uh, road you know like people would mob me like as they mob sharukh khan or as they mob uh, one of the you know young film stars if that is your idea of success definitely go ahead and follow it but if your idea of success 
that okay fine i don't want to become very rich i don't want to become very famous i just want to earn my livelihood to such an extent that you know it will keep me and people around me uh, in what a level of comfort and i want to come back you know after at the end of the day finishing my work i want to spend some nice quality time with my family watching television chatting with them catching up with them you know i want to have my me time you know i would just want to relax at bed reading a book uh, you know uh, listening to some music i don't want anything more than that i am happy with it that is also fine trust me that is also perfectly fine you know in today's day and age when we are all caught up in a very very you know rat race and this is a very very competitive world you know out there you know it's a very competitive world and as the times are also changing you know it's extremely uh, uh and especially for you people you know you are uh, passing through a very very uh, difficult stage the world hasn't seen anything like that in our living memory the pandemic you know everywhere you know the economies are collapsing you know i mean there's massive job retrenchment there is massive unemployment problem especially in india new jobs are not being generated so all of you will be living going through face a lot of competition lot of competition in terms of the material world so it is something you know i really feel bad for your generation that you know why are you made to go through this but this is also life i mean nobody could uh, change it you know this is something you know which is which has happened and we also have to face and accept it so there you know i think this time pandemic also has given us you know the time to reflect reflect a lot and uh, in terms of reassessing our values our desires you know why this pandemic you think about the what is happening in the environment and uh, i am sitting i am seeing a gray sky in delhi and i think you know after a generation uh, people young kids you know they will not know the color of the sky is blue it is gray so our rampant quest of materialistic development that you know i have to buy a new car after that i have to buy a bigger car after that i have to buy a car for each members of my family after that i have to buy bigger cars for the each members of our families you know this constant race to acquire you know to so we are just running on a treadmill and without thinking and this has really led to such a state today that the world is seriously threatened the ecology is seriously threatened and at the end of it then you realize the development for whom if people are suffering you know people in delhi uh, children in delhi they suffer from you know lung diseases like asthma you know breathing problem it taking a toll on your health so ultimately you know you need to question also that all this is you know i might have acquired you know uh, you know three cars five cars but if i'm not healthy will that cars will just be required for for taking me and my family members to the hospital god forbid no so i think this is also a time and you know when of course we are we have had our experiences in life and uh, uh, because of age also you have uh, people in our generation um, that initial thrust of just running 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 it has stopped now but i would also request the younger people the youth because you know a huge future lies ahead of you so when you think about yourself also think about your community your nation your country and also about the whole world because today the whole world is like a global village you know what you do what is happening in one country impacts the other so when you follow your passion when you think about success you know don't define success just in terms of material terms don't define success just in terms of 
what is going to be my bank balance after 10 years which car will i be driving uh, which uh, you know beautiful uh, woman or uh, handsome men we would be dating eventually getting married to all these things are also extremely part of mine but also the ultimate success i think is to grow and go beyond you beyond me and mine and that is i think the ultimate success you know which all we can strive for and when we can do that trust me the kind of joy perhaps it will bring you know no amount of money can buy that 